baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. Baptism is done to wash away our sins, Acts 22.16. Baptism is done to be reborn to new life, John 3.5, Romans 6, 3 through 6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Praise the Lord, everybody. My Lord, have mercy. That's a great song. I was just praising God, and every time I shut my eyes and just thought about the Scriptures, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph. No matter what comes, the outcome is already decided. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Romans chapter 11, beginning with verse 17. Romans 11 and verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, everybody say the Jews. And thou, being a wild olive tree, everybody say the Gentiles, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. In other words, Paul is saying that we should not get high-minded about the fact that we are now God's chosen people. We are not holding up the Jews. The Jews are holding us up. 19, that will say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. I'm the chosen one now. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. Luke chapter 19 and verse 41. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known even thou, at least in this thy day, if you were going to ever know something, today was the day you should have known, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace. But now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and can pass thee round and keep thee in on every side. And shall lay thee even with the ground. And thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. Because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. And then the Bible reveals to us the symptom and the circumstance. That always accompany people that are unaware of the visitation. And he went into the temple and began to cast them out that sold therein and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it the den of thieves. I want to talk to you tonight, and I, you know, I, I understand that some medicine is for a cure. You take it because you need to get rid of something. Some medicine is for prevention. You take it so you never have to get something. 
And I know there's going to be people here tonight that fall into both of these categories. You need to hear this because you need to be cured. But maybe for the most part, Souls Harbor needs to hear this to prevent it from ever happening among us. But I think I want to entitle this message. It's time to deal with the thieves in the house. It's time to deal with the thieves in the house. Would you put your Bibles down and lift your hands to the Lord? And let's ask him to do what he wants to do. Would you lift your voice with me tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? By the authority of the word of God and by the power of the name Jesus. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the revelation of the word of God. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ against every spirit that will come against Souls Harbor. I pray against every attack of the enemy. I pray against every devil that would rise up against this church. I release the angels of the Lord into this place tonight to accompany the preaching of the Word of God. Loose my tongue to speak like you want me to speak, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And everybody said in Jesus' name. You clap your hands to the Lord and let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. Give two or three people a high five and say, let's have some church on Sunday night. I cannot overstress to you the degree to which the Jews felt that they were God's only option. They repeatedly came back as a rebuttal to the truth that Jesus spoke by saying, what are you talking about? We are the seed of Abraham. We are the chosen ones. We are the ones that Abraham gave his blessings to. We are the children of the promise. And Jesus repeatedly said to them, if you really were the children of Abraham, you would understand what I'm saying. You would recognize that what I am speaking is the truth. And... John the Baptist even rebuked the Israelites because he he said, Say not that we are the seed of Abraham. God can raise up these stones and make them the seed of Abraham. God is not looking for a flesh lineage. He's not looking for a church that is connected to the promise through the flesh. He's not looking for someone that says, I am related to the one who got the promise. He's looking for someone that has the same faith that Abraham had. It's not your bloodline that puts you in the church. It's your faith line. When God looks at the church, He's looking for some recognition... Of someone that has the faith of Abraham in their life. And the Jews obviously fought Jesus. They rejected his message. They came against what he said. And even to the point where they crucified the very messenger that came to deliver them. Jesus went into the temple, and the Bible says that when he went into the temple, there was the money changers there. There were the people there that bought and sold, and they had sheep and oxen, and they had the things that would be provided for the sacrifice. And the Bible tells us in the book of John chapter 2 that Jesus braided some cords together, and he began to whip them out of the temple. The Bible says he drove them out of the temple. He drove the sheep and the oxen out of the temple. And he said, my house 
is the house of prayer, but ye have made it the den of thieves. When these people were buying and selling in the temple, it was a perversion of an Old Testament ordinance that's found in the book of Deuteronomy. God said that if someone does not have the ability to bring a sacrifice to church, if they do not have the ability to bring a sacrifice to the temple to be consumed as a burnt sacrifice or to be eaten in the tithing, that I will provide for them an easy way to have a sacrifice so they don't come to the temple without a sacrifice. It was supposed to be used in the case of an emergency. It was supposed to be used in the case when someone simply could not make the journey, something happened to where they could not bring the oxen, they could not bring the sheep, they had no sacrifice available. Instead, they would bring their money, there would be somebody there with the sacrifice, they would pay for that sacrifice, and they would make that sacrifice, and they would look like everybody else in the temple. They would be able to act like everybody else in the temple because they had their sacrifice. But because of the human nature, because of our flesh, what was meant to be an emergency, what was meant to be only used in the time of extenuating circumstance, what was meant to be used only in the most dire of situations became a habit. It became a lifestyle. And people, instead of bringing of the sacrifice of their herds from their home, instead of making the sacrifice, when they were at their house, when they were by themselves, they would bring their money and come to the temple and pay for their sacrifice. And our church today is doing this on a continual basis. Instead of people bringing their sacrifice... To the house of the Lord. They trade with the thieves that are in the house for a convenient sacrifice. Now, I'm going to just preach it straight. Y'all you, know I love y'all to pieces and I, I'm not here to be mean. I love the people of God. I'm telling you, I, I, I am so thankful for the privilege to preach to the people of God. I, I cannot tell you what a delight and what a privilege it is to be a preacher of this gospel. And not only to be a preacher, but to be received by the people. To be, to be accepted and to be heard by the people. But we are living in a day. We are living in an hour. When at a time that the church should be at a peak of revival... At a time when the church should be living at a cutting edge of prayer. At a time when the church should be fasting and praying and studying and evangelizing like we never have in the history of the church. We are dealing with a spirit of lethargy. We are dealing with a spirit of slumber. We are dealing with a spirit that says, shut up. I don't want to hear it. Let's have something else. Let's get on through it. Let's go. Let's get this over with so we can have the next message. And God all the while is telling us, listen, I you are not my only option. Do not think that only because we've been baptized in the name of Jesus. Do not think that only because we speak in tongues. Only because we come to church and to a church called Souls Harbor. That we are God's only option. God can turn to some stones and raise up a church. My God have mercy.
You've got to understand, the Jews, the Jews were everything. They were it, man. If you were a Jew, you were in. You were in the club. Even Paul said, what profit is there to being a Jew? Well, much in every way. For unto the Jews were delivered the oracles of God. Because they were the children of Abraham. Unto them were delivered the oracles of God. Salvation comes through the Jews. But they got into a habit of looking the part without praying. They got into a habit of of, of coming to church and knowing how to have church, knowing how to shout on cue, knowing how to respond properly. But when it actually came to bringing a real sacrifice, they were selling themselves out for the sake of convenience. They were selling themselves out for the sake of looking like everything was together. And the church of the last day, the church of the living God is dealing with the same spirit that attacked the Jews. I look across the audience tonight and I look across the audience of the places we preach and God is blessing. People are getting the Holy Ghost. People are getting miracles. And I could I could have a faith message tonight. And I, I was torn. I was like, God, I'm not even supposed to be here. And I'm going to preach this. I have this great message on, on revival. I've been wanting to preach. God gave me, I think, for soul's harbor. I've been wanting to preach it. And I, I, I'm going to preach this. But we've got to understand uh, there has been so many promises given to this church. Uh, there's been so many prophecies uh, pronounced over your family. There's been so many things that God has promised uh, not only to the church of the living God uh, but also the soul's harbor the glory that we will have in revival the power that God's going to pour out of this church uh, the expansion uh, of the kingdom uh, but if we do not have a sacrifice uh, if we do not come uh, with a sacrifice uh, God's going to pick somebody else Well, lift your hands and pray for a second. Just let something out of your mouth. Let something out of your mouth. Listen, listen, I don't want to be a negative preacher. I, I feel like I'm open to rebuke. If I'm doing something wrong, Brother and Sister Varnum, they can nail me afterwards. They can help me out. But listen, I, I got to tell you, I am so sick. I am so sick of preaching around the issue. There are thieves living in the house. There are thieves living in this house. There are thieves living in your house. Listen, if you can come to church and at church is the only time you're speaking in tongues, if you can come to church and that church is the only time you're dancing. If you can come to church and at church is the only time you're lifting your hands. If that's the only time your kids see you crying out to the Lord. A thief has offered you a convenient sacrifice. And you are not bringing a sacrifice from home. 
You've got nothing available at home to bring. And you've traded your time with the thief. You've bartered your time with the thief. You've bartered your prayer life for entertainment. You've bartered your consecration so you can be numb by the junk of this world. And when you come to church, you're living off of someone else's sacrifice. You're living off of Bishop's lamb. You're living off of Sister Varnum's lamb. You're living off of Sister Danae's oxen when she's singing. You're living off of Pastor Jason's pushing. You're living off of someone else's lamb. Let me tell you something, Souls Harbor. We got to bring our lamb from the home. We got to stop making this a lifestyle to where somebody else is constantly carrying the service. Where's your lamb? Where's your sacrifice? Where's your fire? You see, you see, we have to pick our battle. Those thieves in the house of the Lord were very skilled. The people that were receiving their sacrifice thought they were getting a good deal. They thought they were getting their money's worth. The Bible said the money changers were there. They were taking the currency and they were tweaking it. And they were the ones getting all the profit. You see, this is what happens to us. And I've fallen into this trap. If you're human, you've fallen into this trap. The devil will tell you, why don't you sacrifice your prayer time? Why don't you give up your prayer time and go do, you need to do something else. You need to, you're neglecting this. Or you, just, you need to just go entertain yourself for a little while. Go, go enjoy yourself for a little while. And you have bartered with the thief. He has taken your time and he has given you the opportunity for a convenient sacrifice. But you see, you have been ripped off. Because the battle that you will fight and the sacrifice that you will make now will be greater than the sacrifice you would have made if you would have brought your own sacrifice. We've got to pick our battles. We've got to pick our battles. You're either going to fight the battle to pray through every day, or you're going to fight the hundred other battles in your life that you have to fight, that you wouldn't have had to fight, if you would have just fought that one battle to pray through. I'm telling you right now, I refuse to look back on my life years back and say that was the time. That was the time that I was really paying a price. I refuse to look down the road. In the name of Jesus Christ, I refuse to look back 10 years and say that was the time I was really praying. That was the time I was really fasting. Are you kidding me? Jesus is about to come back. And I'm going to make a statement to you. I hope you still love me. I hope you still love me. But he's not coming back for a carnal church. I don't think carnal people are going to heaven. For the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Jesus told the Jews, I've come to you. This is the time 
Jesus himself was walking in the midst of the people, in the flesh, and they were oblivious to it. completely. Not only were they oblivious, they were fighting him. And Jesus said, I will not have a carnal bride. I will not have a carnal bride. I don't, I don't, you know, you're always going to be who you are. You're always going to be, your soul is the eternal you, okay? The Bible says we're body, soul, and spirit. Our body comes from the earth. The spirit comes from God. When we die, the Bible says the body goes back to the ground dust goes back to dust and the spirit goes back to god who gave it your soul is what's left over that's your will your emotions your intellect your personality you are always going to be who you are for eternity you're not going to be a different person when you go to heaven you're not all of a sudden going to have a complete change of taste buds when you go to heaven pastor jay was saying it this morning this whole earth is just a test to see who's worthy to go to heaven If you don't like prayer now, do you think you're going to have a a, a soul change when you go to heaven? If you don't like like lingering in the presence of the Lord now, do you think you're going to have a soul change when you go to heaven? If you're avoiding His presence and avoiding the sacrifice now and avoiding uh, plugging in now and avoiding the things of God and avoiding the study of the Word and neglecting your prayer life and neglecting your worship and focusing on other things, focusing on movies, focusing on on, on, uh, the the world, whatever thing the world has to offer. You think when you go to heaven you're going to have a soul change. It's not going to happen. You're always going to be you. And there's already been one rebellion in heaven. God's not going to allow another rebellion in heaven. People say the angels didn't have free will. Yes, they do have free will. The angels have free will. Lucifer Lucifer had free will. Michael and Gabriel have free will. When you go to heaven, you're going to have free will. And God is saying, if you are able to live it on that planet... If you can love my presence while you're on that planet, if you can press through no matter what while you're on that planet, I know when you come into my presence, you're not going to have any problems whatsoever. You're not going to have any issues whatsoever. God help the church today. We're living in a day that there are so many thieves in the house, I'm telling you. And preachers are having to patty cake around to just not offend, not, not get people all flustered, not do this, not do that. Beat around the bush. Let me tell you something, church of the living God. It's time to deal with the thieves in the house. And it ain't going to be no casual affair. Jesus took a whip in his hand, and he got so serious about it, he drove them out. It's not going to be a casual experience to kick those thieves that you've been yielding to out of the house. The Lord has just dealt with me for the past few weeks. God dealt with me to go on a fast at the beginning of this year, and I did it. And the Lord has spoken to me about so many things. Joe, you got to get this junk out of your life. You gotta, you gotta tweak these things. You gotta move this out of the way. This is interfering with your walk with God. This is interfering with your prayer life. This is interfering with your focus. Uh, you've gotta get violent sometimes. Uh, I'm gonna tell you the problem that some of us are facing tonight uh, is not that we haven't heard the right message. Uh, you're not waiting on some great revelatory message uh, that bishop or pastor is gonna preach. Uh, the problem uh, is that you've got a thief in your house uh, that you're comfortable with now. That it's still in your time. It's still in your prayer time. It's still in your consecration. And as soon as you kick that dude out, Jesus is going to move in. As soon as you kick him out, the Lord will move right in. As soon as you kick him out, the angels of the Lord will come into your home. As soon as you kick it out, God is going to come to you.
Bible says that David, when he went to face the giant, he said, when nobody was watching, I dealt with a lion and a bear. When nobody's watching. And from those victories that happened in private, God was able to use him in victories that happened in public. The very first thing you're going to face when you get the Holy Ghost and when you start walking in the Spirit is the devil. The devil will come to you. There's no doubt about it. I've always heard preachers say, well, you know, a bunch of people get the Holy Ghost. They say, listen, the devil's going to come fight you. He's going to tell you. That kind of always irritated me. But I didn't want him to say that. I didn't want him to kind of it almost put a damper on what the Lord had done. You know, the devil's going to come attack you and kill you now that you have the Holy Ghost, you know. And, but there is some truth to that. I, I think that the devil does come when people get the Holy Ghost because he wants to trouble their mind. He wants to fill their spirit with uncertainty and doubt and fear and cause them to, to back off of the experience that they just had in God. The second thing that David dealt with was the bear. The bear is a different animal altogether. The lion hunts. The Bible says that Satan is as a roaring lion who walks about seeking whom he may devour. A lion is a snare animal. He's an animal that lays in wait. He, he pounces on unsuspecting prey. If you are a National Geographic freak like me, you'll understand how these things work. The lion will look at the herd and he'll pick out the weakest one and he'll go after that weakest one and he'll take them down. <clears throat> it's, a quick, it's a quick battle. The lion has to do it quickly because he doesn't have stamina. But a bear is a different animal altogether. A bear, a bear is, a bear eats from the moment it wakes up until the time it goes to sleep. Lions eat in seasons. They eat when it's available or when uh, they digest whatever they've eaten. They eat in, they, sometimes they can go seven days without eating. A bear eats constantly, just anything. They eat vegetables, they eat they eat animals, they eat... Some bears derive 50% of their calories from eating bugs. That's a lot of food, that's a lot of bugs. And a bear is very different from a lion. A bear does not try to snare its prey. A bear uses overwhelming force. A bear, once a bear has a hold of something, it is not going to let go of it. A bear is a wrestler. A bear is a monster. They're the largest land carnivores. And the bear represents the flesh. The bear is the flesh. I had a young man come up to me and said, Brother Joe, I've just been wrestling with my flesh so much. I've been wrestling with it. And I said, you were never meant to wrestle with your flesh. You're not supposed to wrestle with your flesh. You don't wrestle with a bear. Bears wrestle for a living. They're going to win. You wrestle with the lion. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality. We wrestle against spiritual things. You do not wrestle with your flesh. If you wrestle with the lion long enough, the lion will back off had the privilege of seeing a YouTube video of a lion that had a zebra, big old zebra, and the zebra is on top of the lion, and the lion had it by the throat. 
And man, that lion's got it and it's got a death grip and the claws are in the neck, but that zebra would not go down. I went, I went. And that zebra was stomping that lion. And you could tell the lion was having second thoughts. I mean, you can look in the lion's eyes and the lion, at first its eyes closed, its ears are back, and then it was like, and it's starting to think, is this really worth it for me to continue to hold on to this zebra? Because lions run out of strength. Eventually. What does the Bible say? Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Resistance means an equal pressure in the opposite direction. When you are resisting him, you are wrestling him. And if you wrestle long enough, he'll run from you. Because he cannot outlast you. But unfortunately, most of us are not wrestling with the devil. We're wrestling with our flesh. And we're losing. You cannot out-wrestle a bear. If you want to kick a lion out of his territory, the only thing that can remove a lion from his territory is a bigger lion. Nothing else will move him. That's why the Bible says he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. When you allow the Spirit of God to work in your life, Satan's got to run. But the bear will not leave his territory. That's what we're having problems with in America right now. We preach for a pastor. They've got two bears that live on their property. They come after dinner time. They feel like it's their time to eat. They go. They untake the lids off the cans. They look in and they say, my goodness, look what they left us tonight. They will not leave. They will live near garages. They will live near dumps. The only thing that will remove a bear from its territory is for its food source to be removed. I got three wows, two hand claps, and four head nods. Thank you. And we are dealing with a day of flesh. Some of you, you're not fighting the devil. You're wrestling with your flesh. And you are so wore out. You are so tired. It is in your face. It's in your body language. It's in your eyes. I saw Pastor Jason up here. I'm telling you, when I was standing right there, I closed my eyes. It felt like I was flying off into the heavens, man. And I'm, I'm thinking, my God, this is the greatest feeling. This is the most incredible. There is such a flow of God. And I'm looking across this audience and I see a tired church. I see a tired church. I'm not going to flatter you, Souls Harbor. I see a tired church. I see a church that's wrestling with its flesh. Listen, Souls Harbor, it's time to kick the thief out of the house. Whatever's feeding your flesh, whatever's making your flesh so strong, it's time to crucify that flesh. It's time to say flesh no more flesh no more chila bahasa telebeke yataya lift your hands to the lord right now just somebody pray somebody worship
Ila baba hakatala bahasha tala bahasa. Ilo boho shatala bahasa tala bahaya. In the name of Jesus. Shiri bakalo boho remahaya. Hikeda maharia satai. Man, it's much more romantic. I wish tonight I was preaching. I wish tonight I was preaching. We're dealing with a giant devil. It's much more romantic. It's much more flashy. The spirit of Jezebel has risen up. The blah, 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 blah. The spirit and that spirit. Let me tell you something. I don't care what devil in hell. I don't care what devil, even if it's out of the book of Revelation, steps into an apostolic church. If they have crucified their flesh, it's going to run. And we're living in a day, God help us, we're living in a day, I've even heard preachers talk about it. You know, you just live in a prayer consciousness. You don't, don't just live in a prayer consciousness. You meditate on the Lord. Some days you can pray, some days you just think about Him. God bless you. That may work for you. I've been praying for a little while now. And fasting and studying and talking to great men and women of God. It don't seem to work for most of them. You got to get to that place in prayer where you have butchered your flesh. Where that stinking thief that's taking your time. I, I know I'm plowing right now. God help me. I'm, I don't, I, I'm plowing. I'm digging. I don't care. I feel, I feel great in the Lord right now. I'm telling you, I feel like the Lord's just standing up here with me. But you got to get into a prayer meeting, apostolic saints of God, to where your eyes get a little puffy sometimes, to where you forget about what time it is sometimes, to where you're praying until you're speaking in tongues and you can't stop talking in tongues. You've got to exert some energy. Come on, we're, we're freaks about everything else. We're absolute freaks. You get something you love, you start talking about something you love, your face will become animated, you'll raise your voice. If your kids make you mad, you'll yell at them. But when it comes to prayer, we become the most conscientious. Image conscious. Man, God help us. God help us. I'm looking for the day. I'm looking for the day when some saints of God just come rolling down the aisle. They just come rolling. I'm looking for the day when from the front to the back people are dancing. When from side to side where somebody's beating on the wall all the way in the back. Uh, when somebody's crazy about Jesus. Uh, it don't matter where they're sitting. Uh, I'm talking about where a husband uh, is laying hands on his wife uh, and a wife is laying hands on her husband. Uh, I'm talking about where somebody's so in the spirit. Uh, they're just prophesying. Uh, I'm talking about a prayer that's been unleashed. I'm talking about a prayer life and a worship life that's been unleashed. Come on, souls, however, crucify that flesh. There are promises from God that He wants to rain down on us.
Come on, kick those thieves out. Get those thieves out of your house. You're not fighting the devil. I'm telling you right now, you're not fighting the devil. You're wrestling with that old dirty flesh. You got to get that stuff under subjection. Let me tell you how to do it. You got to do exactly the opposite of what it's telling you to do. If you're comfortable, you're probably not breaking your flesh. Get out of that flesh. Take the lamb out of the bear's mouth. Kill that bear. God wants to lift us up into the heavenlies. He wants to lift us up into heavenly places. But you got to leave that flesh on the ground. Hey! Let me tell you what we're about to do. Keep on praying. I want you to turn off all these main lights. Leave the chandeliers on. We are, it's only 7.30. We are about to have a Holy Ghost a apostolic tear down prayer meeting right now. We're going to pray and the glory of the Lord is going to fall in this house. I'm telling you something right now. Your marriage is not dealing with the devil. You're dealing with your stinking unbroken flesh. You're dealing with uncrucified flesh. That's the only thing the devil can feed on. That's the only thing the devil has access to. If you need deliverance, get out of your flesh. Come on, pray till it's down. Pray till it's out. Weave your whip. Drive that thief out. Drive him out. Pray, a warrior, I release you right now to do exactly what you feel in the Holy Ghost. Uh, intercessor, I release you in the name of Jesus Christ uh, to pray exactly how you want to pray in the name of Jesus. Uh, fanatical worshiper, I release you right now. Come on. Uh, there's some people so wrapped up uh, in strongholds of the flesh. Uh, they need help getting out. Uh, they need help getting out. Uh, come on. Uh, even if you already walk in the Spirit, Pray for somebody else. God, loose them. God, set them free. We cannot miss our visitation.
Y carraca la carra la carrea la la ría la raja y la y carraca la carrepe y la rama y la casa calate y la haya. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, if you've been having issues uh, in your family, if you've been having issues with your children, uh, if you've been having issues between husband and wife, uh, I wish to God uh, you would grab your family and just talk in tongues uh, until you're all in the spirit. Uh, I wish I saw some hucking and bucking. Uh, I wish I saw some bobby pins flying. Uh, I wish I saw somebody getting drunk in the Holy Ghost. Uh, God wants to loose us from our flesh. Uh, God wants to loose us from our flesh. Uh, God wants to loose us from our flesh. We got to get out of our flesh into the spirit. Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings into the remission of sins, for salvation to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first, Resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.